What's up everyone? So today I'm jumping behind the wheel of a 2017 Fiat 124 Spider. We're in the six speed manual today so I can't wait to test that out. This vehicle is courtesy of Benson Fiat and Alfa Romeo so I will have a link to this car in the description below. But I wanted to start off with the top down in this car just to show you how easy it is to actually do. I did a review on this car a couple months ago and I was in the automatic so look how easily I just did that very quick to do uh, so I am ready to see how the manual performs in this car let's go for a drive all right so setting off the bite point in the clutch is not too bad or I should say not too far out let's see getting on the road here just have to get used to it a bit start off with some specs on this car so this is the Classica which I mentioned and that is the kind of base level entry car for the 124 you also have the Prima Lusa which is a limited edition they only have a hundred or they're only producing hundred and twenty four of those cars and then there's the Abarth I was really hoping to check out the manual Abarth today uh, but we're in the Classica so it still has the six-speed manual um, in this car you have a 1.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder. It has 160 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. If you go for the Abarth model, it pushes that horsepower up to 164. And then you also get a few other options. There is a sports uh, chrome tip exhaust. You get a huge red tack in the center which is nice to see. And then Brembo brakes is actually an option for the Abarth as well. I'm not sure if you actually need those. This car weighs about 2,400 pounds. And the standard brakes on the, on the Classica do a fantastic job stopping it. So the Brembos, I don't see as, as a need for the car, but it's definitely cool that you can get them as an option, especially if you're gonna be tracking the car more than, you know, than just taking it out on, on daily drives. So getting into how this manual compares to the automatic, the automatic you get uh, steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, but the throws in the manual are very short, very precise. Very easy to get it in the gear that you're looking for. And the clutch is very lightweight. Of course, for a small engine like this, the clutch isn't going to be that heavy. It's definitely doable on a daily basis, but very smooth shifter. I really like how this car drives with the manual. It's a ton of fun, very driver engaging for sure. And with a lightweight car like this, you're going, in my opinion, I would prefer the manual just because it is a lot more fun, especially in this lightweight of a vehicle. You're gonna have a lot more fun driving it. I also like the fact, and I just noticed this, that on the center tack, it actually shows you which gear you're in. I do like that. On a daily basis, it may not be necessary, but if you're out on a mountain road or something, and for some reason you forget what gear you're in, I like to see that pop up. It's just something that could be useful. Uh, again, that would be a preference for somebody, but I do like seeing it on the dash. It disappears when you're in neutral, and then when you put it back into gear, it will pop back up. So to go over some of the daily driver aspects of this car, it is very nice, the seating position I do like. Uh, these aren't the sports seats or anything, but they have nice bolstering on the side. I can definitely feel them hold me in a little bit, so going around some turns, you'd definitely be well planted in the seats here. The steering wheel is also very comfortable. It's not too big for this car, but I like the uh, thumb notches that you have for good grip when you're out on a back road or something in this car. And the power of it too, it sounds really good for a 1.4 liter, which is surprising. Let's do a little performance test in it. Zero to 60 for this car is the mid six second range, so it's not the quickest car to 60, but it definitely, it definitely gets up and goes. It's not slow, but it's again, it's not the fastest car to 60. You're definitely gonna have more fun with this car, I think throwing it around back mountain roads, really, than going you know fast in a straight line. As far as visibility in this car, you really do have almost a 360 degree view with the top up. With the top down, of course, you know, there's no blind spots for you. And I know a common question that I might get on this video, I had in 
the previous 124 videos is headroom in this car. So I am 5'10", and you can see maybe three, maybe four fingers here with the top up. So if you're any taller than 5'10", you might have some trouble with the top up. Now if you put the top down, you easily have you know, no limit to how tall you can be. So if, if you're in a warmer climate and you don't need the top up all the time, it might work. But if you're any taller than 5'10", you might be a little crammed. So now that we do have the top down, we can see how much wind noise is affecting the audio. Hopefully it's not too much, but I'm not going to have the top down that long with filming. I do need to make a quick UE here. So I'm not going very fast with the top down, probably about uh, 20, 25 here. Uh, so again, hopefully that doesn't affect the wind noise, but right now just cruising, it's very calm down in the cabin. I can feel a little bit on my head since I'm just above the windshield here. It's actually a really nice day out, so it's nice to have be in a convertible today. And we're gonna take some turns here. Ooh. Definitely handles very well. So we have a few turns ahead of us here. We can test out the handling of this car. Again, weighing 2,400 pounds, you should be able to throw this thing around some turns. Oh yeah, no body roll at all. Feels very well. Handles very well, I should say. Wow, very planted in the turns. This is definitely a fun back mountain road where you just want to enjoy the curves. You're not looking for, you know, the fastest line around those turns. You're looking just for a pure driver engaging fun car. Taking those back mountain roads. Oh, kitty, get out of the way. So yeah, in this car is definitely going to handle turns very well. Oh yeah, very planted. All right, so just got to a stop a stop sign here. Easily put up the top. And now, oh, if you didn't notice, the windows actually went down when I did the top. So that's a feature so they can clear when you put the top down. Now we'll get back out on the road here. Actually, I know there's some turns down here that we can take. So as far as the interior in this car goes, it's very, even for the base model, you could say, it has a very premium feel to it. The screen in the center is not touch screen, however, but you have a nice dial down here that you'll easily be able to learn. It's not too uh, confusing. It's user friendly, I should say. You just have to play with it a little bit. Um, I just connected to Bluetooth, so that needs to go away. But other than that, you have all your climate control buttons easily laid out. I like having a car that doesn't have a lot of buttons to play with, so you have those easily accessible. You also have two cup holders in the center here, and what you can actually do with one of them is there is a spot down on the passenger side where you can move one of those, so you have a little bit more elbow room, which is nice, and then you have your center glove box. There's no storage down below like in a a normal spot for one it's in the back here and you do have a, a good amount of space in the back of the trunk it's not huge but you could fit a couple bags in there you know some groceries it's not something that's going to be the most practical for you but you do have a good amount of room in there for daily items that you could fit so I hope you guys enjoyed that test drive review of the six-speed manual in the 124 Fiat Spider. If you'd like to see more specs on the car in general, check out the video in the description below when I checked out the Prima Lusso. So that was the six-speed automatic, but you will get a lot more specs in that video than in this test drive. So if you enjoyed that video, make sure to subscribe for more content on the way. I'll see you guys next video.